channel. I am Adorkable Rachel and today I have a special guest. We have Alexander Robinson aka the real Mr. Robinson with us. Say hi. Hi everyone and I'm <laughs> just here sitting on the couch. Yes, welcome to our couch. There's more room out here so I figured let's just shoot in the living room today. So today we are going to be talking about Avengers Infinity War and as you can see Wait, we, we are. I thought we were doing something else. I thought we were just wearing these Marvel shirts just out of coincidence. Yeah, you didn't get the memo? We were, we were not, emailing about this, you didn't, you didn't... I, I, I rarely check my emails. Okay. Anyway, we are going to be talking about Avengers Infinity War. We brought in uh, Mr. Alexander here specifically to do a spoiler review. Yep. Normally when I do my reviews, I make it either a non-spoiler or a spoiler review. Today though, I am actually doing two reviews. You already saw my uh, regular review, I'm assuming. Today we're doing the spoiler review together so we can talk and compare our uh, ideas and thoughts and what we, uh, just everything that we thought about the movie. This movie's so massive, I don't think one review was even no. good, like, good enough. <laughs> we just had to keep on... This one deserves two reviews, even on this channel. Yeah, no matter how much it's gonna drain everyone emotionally. Mm-hmm. We actually met um, at a Stardust event, because we both know each other from uh, doing our Stardust reactions, and right. uh, we met at the Rampage screening. Rampage! It was so good! It was such a fun movie. Um, oh, oh, I was just quoting Archer. Oh, come on. <laughs> No, 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 seriously, in all seriousness, it's a really fun movie if you yeah. get a chance to see it, but stupid anyway. Stupid but fun. Yeah, very stupid and fun, um, but we uh, use Stardust, we react to movies and everything, so we decided this would be a great opportunity for us to come together and actually talk about something we love, which is movies and the Avengers. Well, just, I guess we'll jump into spoilers now. Nobody says Avengers Assemble still. No. We got one more movie, guys. You got one more movie for somebody. May, hopefully Steve Rogers to say Avengers Assemble. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've been on a good track record so far, but if you get to whatever the fourth one's called and no Avengers Assemble is said, I'm out of here. I know. Well, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense in this one because not everyone is all together yet, but I have a feeling like since in this movie they haven't all gotten together in the same place yet, they're hopefully going to save that for the next movie. Yeah, which can't come here soon enough. No, like it can't. The, the one, I'll never say this about a movie that I'm looking forward to being released earlier. We have to wait longer now for whatever the fourth movie is going to be. Because they, they haven't changed the release for that one. Nope, it's still May 2019, which we got to wait for. But I am a little grateful. It's um, it's a little shorter than having to wait for the next Star Wars film, because those are always like two years apart from each other now. This one's yeah. only eight years, so... Um... This next one's coming out in a few weeks. I know. I know, that's right, though, actually. We've got another one, another um, Star Wars film coming out yeah. in a couple weeks, which I'm so excited about, but it's just not the continuing story. Out of all. So overall, Mr. Robinson, you're the guest, so give me your thoughts on Infinity War. All right. Um, well, it's been 10 years in the making for Marvel. So many heroes come together throughout multiple films, and... I mean, they've had an amazing track record so far, with the exception of a few slumps, Thor The Dark World. But, um, they've been doing- they've been killing it with Phase 3. Uh, Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians 2, Spider-Man, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, and the Russo Brothers have made the very best films, and while I personally think that this isn't as good as Winter Soldier or Civil War, it's still impressive nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so, honestly, it's not even in the grand scheme. It had, I don't even think I'd even call it my favorite Avengers film, particularly. I personally have a huge soft spot for the first one. But, same here. But this one does up the stakes quite a bit, and yeah. obviously we've got like just about every Avenger out there, almost all of them, not every single one. But Yeah, but I mean, there are reasons why two members in particular aren't here. Yes. Um, Which I guess we're already in spoiler realm, so we can pretty much say This it. is a spoiler review if you didn't already know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the only two members that are missing are Ant-Man and Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. There's some, I feel like there are some others somewhere, I mean... Well, Valkyrie. Valkyrie. Valkyrie's she's not, not in it. She's not an Avenger, though. No, but she's still within the universe. Yeah. I think she might have been one of those corpses in the beginning. Maybe, yeah. Which, I mean, that, that and the idea of Korg being on that ship at the beginning is depressing, because mm -hmm. one the one thing I've always regretted whenever I talk about Thor Ragnarok is never mentioning Korg, so yeah. <laughs> it's just like, so where is he now in Infinity War? Oh, he's the various debris of rubble throughout I, the I, whole I, ship. I guess so, I guess it's implied. So speaking of depressing, 
This movie is depressing. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's still an MCU movie and a lot of fun, but man, is it a downer flick. Yeah. Especially in the very beginning and especially in the very end. I think it's more depressing in the end. Oh, yeah, yes. definitely. I I don't know why, but I wasn't expecting it to be such a, um, a downer in the end. Because, okay, so Thanos basically... If you haven't seen the uh, film, which I hope you have if you're seeing this, but anyway. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, for, sorry to interrupt you, but if you've, you have no business seeing this movie if you haven't seen every other movie beforehand, because this is very much geared to everyone who's followed it beforehand. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned this in my spoiler-free review, but it's like, hey, have you seen all every other movie beforehand? All right, come on in. No? Go away. This is not for you. <laughs> it's, um, you could watch this without all the other movies, but you're definitely going to follow along and be way more invested if you've seen all the other films beforehand. Yeah. Uh, and also, of course, Thanos doesn't have as big of a build-up in this film if you haven't seen the other movies, because they do build him up quite a bit. Right. His goal is to get all these Infinity Stones so he can basically rule the universe slash wipe out half the universe. And um, at the very end, he does get all the stones, and... Basically, everyone starts vanishing. Well, half of half. everyone. Well, yes, half of everyone. Yeah, when I say everyone, I mean like the people who matter. I'm kidding. Well, um, no, no, no. Just the, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That, there are some people who matter that are taken <laughs> out too. Yeah. So um, the they and it's really um, heartbreaking too how they everyone like literally just seems to disintegrate and not in a painful way, but they just kind of like fall to pieces like ash and like, like Voldemort. Yeah, like Voldemort, yeah. and it is just. It's so hard to watch, especially because Spider-Man's my favorite. Uh, oh. oh my gosh, his was a slow, painful death. Just, I, I think his like. was the worst. Huh? Yeah, him he was and like, maybe Teenage Groot. Yeah, and Teenage Groot, oh buddy. Um, no, that was um, and I, even when I was seeing this movie, I was thinking to myself like, this can't be the end of this movie. It can't be, and I just I was I was kind of in denial, I think, because I just didn't want this to be the end. I knew there was going to be a part two coming up at the same time. I was yeah. like. No, well, I, well, I, I mean, what happened? Well, I mean, when they roll credits, like usually the, the okay, guys. If you've seen all the movies, you know the convention for the end credits. Or they'll have a flashy sequence or just some amazing looking graphics. This one is just black screen and credits, and that just lets you know that yeah, this movie's a downer. So it's not a very triumphant ending, which I but, had kind of hoped for when I saw this, but. It, not it's so not much. But, it's not, but the end credits scene definitely gives you a slip of hope. Yeah. And did you actually notice that the um, the end credits with Nick Fury, by the way, and Maria Hill, and Maria Hill? Did you notice that it was a one take? I did. Yes. Uh, that's especially considering that this is the first movie to be from beginning to end filmed with IMAX cameras. Mm -hmm. So. I imagine those things are incredibly noisy and heavy, so <laughs> considering that they did that one take is impressive. Yeah, I mean, long takes are super hard to do, but when done right, there's so much, um, yeah. there's so much um, emotion put behind them and so much um, gravity to the weight of the situation. I mean, because especially when, you know, they tend to do this a lot in a lot of the Marvel films, but especially when you see Nick Fury and then you immediately switch to his point of view, as far as the camera at least, and seeing what he sees, like, like over his shoulder, yeah. it just makes it even more um, like you're right there with him in it. And I mean, to see him disintegrate too was also like really heartbreaking. And you're just like, is True. there no more hope now for our humanity? Well, I mean, well, well, yes. Actually, we know that there is. Do, <laughs> do we just want to get into that right now? Of course we do. Yeah. So all right. So basically, um, Nick Fury has some sort of device that he drops as soon as he starts to disintegrate, right before he shouts out mother mm -hmm. because this was, this is technically a Disney movie, so you can't really have Samuel Jackson saying that. No, but he goes, mother And then, <laughs> yeah, then the device falls to the floor, but it apparently makes a call, and then it just has a little dot, 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 and then it shows the symbol for Captain, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel! More, more specifically, the one that everyone wants to see, Carol Danvers. Yes, I'm so excited about this. Yeah. Like, like the, the, okay, I, at the screening, I was sitting next to one guy, and it was literally an out-of-body experience, because he was like, <laughs> yeah, he was like the dude cheering at all these screenings, and um, when the Captain Marvel logo came up, he was freaking out, like, oh, what, 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 Alexander, <laughs> did that. you see that? I don't know, I don't know how he knew my name, but... Maybe he recognized you and didn't want to say anything. <laughs> it's happened before. I'm surprised that no one saw that coming, because I saw that coming, but I was still yeah. really excited about it. Yeah. Uh, no, but that's... Well, I mean, most people 
I'm sure most, a majority of people who watch these movies aren't nerds like us. Yeah, 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 well, not on our level at least, yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, but it was still super, I don't know, it was just a very um, uplifting scene from after all the, um, the turmoil that we just had to go through and then we finally yeah. get the one thing that's like, yes, that one ounce of hope is finally coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it and was fantastic. And we get to see her solo movie beforehand. Mm-hmm. Because unlike, uh, unlike some other people, I won't say any names, they know how to set up and introduce us to things before we get to the big team-ups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one thing that's um, noteworthy of all these Marvel films is, I mean, they've always just done this great job of giving the audience what they want. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got great action sequences, some pretty good stories for the most part, some weak villains that need some changes, but that changed here, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh, um, yeah. But then we also get all the action and the quip, and what I love about this movie in particular is that, you know, of course it's the Avengers, and they don't always come together in the movie like we want them to, like everyone in the same place, but we do have characters who have never shared a movie together, and we get to see how they would interact with each other. True, which, I mean, if I was disappointed in one thing, and oh. this is definitely not the film's fault, this is just me going in with expectations okay. on how the movie should be when they're not the intentions. Um, I didn't get my Spider-Man Hulk crossover. Oh. Like, cause I, 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 like, one of the very first comics I read, it was this, um, it was this movie tie-in to Ang Lee's Hulk, which, ugh. <laughs> uh, that's something for another time, but they had some shorter comics in the back, and one of them was this weird comic, was just this random comic where the Hulk is rampaging and fights Spider-Man, and I never got that. I've, ever since they put Spider-Man in the MCU, I wanted to see that collaboration, but uh, Hulk is just in one scene in this whole movie, and that scene you see in the trailers where they're all charging at the screen? Yeah, about that. He's not there. No, he's <laughs> not. I was a little disappointed about that because I was so looking forward to seeing the Hulk again, because the Hulk is in the very beginning of the movie, and then, and for the sake of the plot, Bruce Banner cannot turn back into the Hulk for the rest of the film. He yeah. struggles with it. I think. Well, Thank I mean, you, plot fairies. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a reason. There, I feel like there's a reason for that because the only time we see the Hulk, he's fighting Thanos. And, I know. And this is in the first five minutes. They show you how tough Thanos is. Um, he manages to take out the Hulk in his heavy armor mm -hmm. without using an Infinity Stone because he has the power gem from Guardians, and the Hulk is pretty much broken right before he gets. Um, Lifted away back to Earth thanks to Heimdall before he gets axed off. Yeah, so and he's kind of like inner, like Hulk is like, no, I don't want to come back. Anymore. Exactly. <laughs> but but it did suck to not have him come back at the end because I was looking forward to that too, to having him in that battle at the very end of the movie and because it was in the trailer. Yeah. But then it never happened, and I was just like, what the hell, guys? Hollywood, you guys gotta learn, like. Don't put things in trailers, they're not going to be in the movie. Yeah. Stop it, you're not doing us any favors. Yeah, one. Yeah, but, um, but Thanos, on the other hand, so... Yeah. Talk um, about a complex villain. Oh, yeah, um, do you think he dethrones Killmonger in terms of most complex villain? No... I mean... I, 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 Ooh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I was just so happy that he wasn't like the weak sauce villains that we've gotten in the past on that level. And I'm so happy that the, the buildup of him was, you know, paid off, at least, you know, from the way I saw it. Because he was built up in a lot of films, actually. Yeah. And, and, th and this time around, we got to learn more about him. We saw how powerful he was in the very beginning. He was a threat. He has motivation. And he doesn't crack jokes. Huh? He doesn't like, crack jokes. I mean, like, one issue that I have with Age of Ultron, and I'm one of the few people that likes it or, and thinks Ultron is not as bad of a villain as people say he is, there were a few points where he cracked a few one-liners here and there that didn't work out too well, but then again, there are plot details for why he has that personality. But yeah. with Thanos, he's just dead serious, he's calm, he never raises his voice, and he is surprisingly quick for being as big as he is. Yeah. Like, when, when he fights the Hulk and beats the shit out of the Hulk, I was like, <laughs> la I was laughing, but in that very nervous laugh, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, everyone else is screwed. I know, I know. No, that was a really great way to set up the film with this kind of villain. Like, the Hulk is one of the most powerful, um, one of the most powerful heroes in this whole franchise, and yeah. to have 
Thanos beat him is pretty, um, it's like, oh damn, we in trouble. <laughs> yeah, every, yeah. Yeah. And, and they kill Loki off, like, right away. That, by the way, that was a big surprise to me. And it's funny, too, because I heard before the film started, someone's gonna die in the beginning, and I don't know why I didn't think it was gonna be Loki, but that still caught me off guard. I mean, I, I kinda got a clue. I even touched upon this in my, um, I did a trailer review mm -hmm. on my channel where I mention, I feature a bunch of Stardust reactions, mm -hmm. and I say that Loki's probably gonna die right before the titles come up. And, and you were absolutely right. I was correct, <laughs> and I mean, like, I've seen some of your, like, Star's reactions on the whole MCU. You're not that big into Loki as much as most people are. No, I mean, I think he's okay. I guess, honestly, I feel like my biggest gripe with him is that he's kind of a ladies' man in the nerd community, and I'm just like, I don't get it. Like, I don't mm. think, I mean, I think Tom Hiddleston on his own is fine, but I never thought Loki was that good looking. Also, he, like, is so powerful and man-hungry, and it's just like... Why are you into yeah. that? I don't well, I mean, know. Well, I mean, to quote Thor in Ragnarok, he's a little we Weasley and greasy. That's so. exactly it. He's Weasley and he's also greasy. And also, he keeps screwing people over. Yeah. And I, I know that that's part of his appeal, and I get that. I just don't understand yeah. the whole complexity behind him. Like, in the in the first part of this movie, he kept going back and forth with Thor, and I couldn't yeah. even really tell he, for sure if he was, like, really on Thor's side or if he was just... He, he was still not happy about Get Help. No. <laughs> But still, I just was like, dude, just, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I, I get it, but he's still just a very frustrating character yeah. to me, but probably all, in the best way. Well, I mean, also, he was, because he was the main villain in the first Avengers, he's the reason why everyone came together, and yeah. they established he's already working for Thanos, and if he failed, there was no place where he could hide, mm -hmm. so the second Thanos came up, even if Loki handed him the Tesseract or the Space Stone, wait, is it Space Stone? Oh shoot, which one was it? Uh, okay. Whatever, okay, that stone in the Tesseract. Space stone, because... Yeah, I think, I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, like, Thanos is not gonna let him go. It's like, hey, thank you for this, but you still fucked up. You're mm -hmm. gonna die. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of brutal in terms of the way he dies. Huh? It was, I was, I honestly, like, sometimes in movie theaters, things will catch me off guard, and I mm -hmm. will just, like, scream a bit, and I literally did when he cracked his neck. Like, he yeah. literally cracked his neck. And I, I mean, was like, oh my gosh. Like, it was brutal, but at the same time, as I said, it was kind of... I, I, saw, I saw it coming. Yeah. Who I didn't see getting killed off was Gamora. I didn't see that coming either, and she had better come back. Because I'm going to be pissed if she doesn't come back. Yeah, well, I mean, there's only one member of the Guardians left. Huh? I know. Uh, no, 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 two, if you, if you count Nebula. Well, yeah, okay. No, that's true. I mean, she, she took off at the end of Volume 2, but she was still part of that big final battle. Mm hmm So, yeah, it's just her and Rocket left. I know. Man, this, this is so depressing. So here's the thing about that, is I have high hopes that somehow everyone's going to come back, because, I mean, I don't know. It just wouldn't seem right if they didn't, but I just, when, ne when, mm. when, um... The fourth one comes out? Yes, yeah, when the fourth one comes out, I just hope everyone somehow comes back. I mean, I have a feeling like they will, like I said. But it's, I don't it was just so, um, to see her die like that, and I mean, I mean, it was served hit, um, Thanos' character so well, because again, yeah. I don't think anyone of us expected, oh, he's got some kind of love in his heart. Oh no, it turns out he does. It, and yeah, that's what made him so complex. And but, the reason why he shed a tear when he threw his adoptive daughter that he kidnapped down to a cliff. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, Gamora, oh my gosh. And I think just the fact that like you see her body and like you can see the back of her head is bleeding. Yeah. That's what like really got to me. I know me too. I just I just don't know. I sure as hell hope she comes back, but there's I just obviously there's no way to tell right now, but that was still a big shock to me. And mm -hmm. and it's funny too because when they mentioned like, oh you have to sacrifice someone you love, I was like, oh god no. Like yeah. I know what he's gonna do, but please don't go there and it did. He did. Um do we want to get into who tells Thanos about? Yes, of course we do. That caught me. That actually caught me off guard. I was uh, Red yeah. Skull. Yeah, who is not played by Hugo Weaving because apparently he pissed a lot of people off. Oh, I know he didn't. He, he just really didn't want to come back, from what I read. But it, like, there was one day. Well, random side note. There was one day where he just went on a big rant about doing these franchise movies, whether it was. Um, uh, Captain America or Transformers, mm -hmm. and everyone was just like, "All right, bye." <laughs> good run. But I mean, the Red Skulls just make up anyway. You didn't. I know it, it sure didn't bother me at all. Yeah, and he, and he had a very small role in here. He was only in one scene, really. Yeah. And so, 
Yeah, it's it served its purpose. Yeah. It finally told us where the soul stone was, and I don't know how, about you, but I've been saying for the longest time, ever since First Avenger came out, and he was defeated, I thought, he's not dead. He is not dead. He's gonna come back in some form. And I waited, how many years? Seven years. Has it been that I long? Was, yeah, the first Avenger came out in 2011. That's so weird. We're old. <laughs> we are. Well, this this whole franchise has been around for 10 years, which is crazy enough. Um, no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think when I saw it too, I thought to myself, like, well, he's not dead, but then, like, nothing ever really became of him after that for years yeah. and years, so it was kind of, I just kind of like was like, okay, whatever, maybe he is dead, but yeah, there he is all of a sudden. Yeah, was, and they explained that he was, you know, he was banished there. Yeah. I don't, it was really a nice little, um, a, a nice little thing to go back to. This whole movie in general was very enjoyable. I mean, it's to be expected. But I remember though when I, when I left the theater I, and I was reading about what people thought of it online, mm -hmm. some people were like, this is the next Empire Strikes Back. I don't know if I quite agree with that. Uh, I can meet them halfway there to an extent. I mean, it's um, definitely epic I, enough. I said it was a mix of Lord of the Rings and Empire Strikes Back. Because yeah. Because you got the huge battle of Wakanda, you have all these characters in different areas throughout the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And I would agree that it's in the vein of Empire Strikes Back because a lot of people get taken out. And I think the biggest character that gets taken out that really proves that this is like Empire Strikes Back is T'Challa. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I seriously thought there's no way they're gonna get rid of him because he's still new, he just had his movie a few months ago, it's about, <laughs> yeah. it's about to come on Blu-ray in a few weeks, mm -hmm. so there's no way they can get rid of T'Challa, but... I guess, I know, I guess it just in the matter of like how many people get killed off and the heavy weight to the, you yeah. know, the situation, especially at the end, I can, I can totally see that. Plus, you know, we all see what everyone here is fighting for even though they're not fighting together. But it's, um, I think what really was made me think, like, no, it's not the next Empire Strikes Back, is because, and I think maybe this is the one thing the movie could have used, is there isn't, like, this big twist in it. You know, except for that maybe Red Skull is still alive. Yeah, but that, that's <laughs> not monumental. That, I that's guess not, not kind of... but I felt like that's what really made Empire, was finding out that Luke was... Vader's father, spoiler alert, uh, but because... No, no, Vader was Luke's father. I'm sorry, wrong words, I'm wrong words. Vader was Luke's that, father. That would have been an interesting movie. No, it would have been. But I feel like that was the turning point, not just because, you know, it's like, oh, I never thought of it that way kind of thing, but it just, it just changed everything that Luke knew to be true. That's yeah. why I felt like that was such a monumental moment and why The Empire Strikes Back was that movie and why it's so great. And I didn't feel like this movie had that. This was just... A simple story of bad guy wants these things, everyone's coming together to fight him, and that's it. And there's nothing specifically wrong with that, but that's what I feel like holds right. it back from being on the Empire Strikes Back level, at least in my opinion. I, I guess. Like, it's definitely not... I mean, um, if you look at the heroes themselves, it's not super complex. None of the heroes get a lot of character development at all. It's mostly devoted to Thanos and mm -hmm. a little bit of Gamora because of relationship issues. Because of father-daughter yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, not not, not boyfriend-girlfriend relationship issues, no. but just family stuff. But yeah. again, like I said, I've, I've said this in my review, um, if this was like the fifth movie and we're just bringing in all these characters for the first time, then I'd have an issue with them not giving a whole lot of time. But everyone mm -hmm. we see in the hero side has at least had one movie yeah. to where we get to know them. Yeah, exactly. And I think that also a strength is, of this film is that you know, obviously we don't spend time getting to re-know all the characters, because otherwise we'd be here for three hours and that would have been completely pointless. But yeah. I think that we have just enough time with most of the characters that we get a good idea of their personality. So that then when you get new characters together, they work off each other insanely yeah. well. Like you, and when you are with like Tony Stark, you know, it feels like Iron Man. And when you're with the Guardians of the Galaxy, it feels like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And everyone's still very true to themselves, they're just now in a lot of characters are in the same environment. True. And, and it works really well, especially for a movie where they're not all in one place. There's like a bunch of people in a bunch of different locations together. Yeah, I, I do find it funny that they decide to put all the smart asses together. You got, <laughs> you got uh, Tony Stark, Peter Quill, Peter Parker, and mm -hmm. Stephen Strange together, and they're two, all the two smart Peters, asses. Two Peters, yeah. <laughs> yeah, two Peters. Uh, yeah. Um, and then all the like epic, I'm just gonna fight to fight people like Captain America, and Black Widow, and um, uh, Falcon, Falcon, and War Machine, yeah. who like 
Thank God. They're a bit more of the straight people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you put all of them together. But it just it just all seemed to work pretty well. Yeah. For a movie where it could have been really hard to follow or even for, you know, it hard to be able to absorb everyone's personalities and go with it. I felt like as a whole this movie still worked very well. Yeah, and um, like a lot of people are wondering, well how do you bring something as absurd as Guardians of the Galaxy into something, I don't want to say grounded like the Avengers because there's definitely some thing, the, some members that are not grounded in reality. <laughs> yeah. And um, I mean it definitely helps that Thor Ragnarok was like a Guardians movie. Yeah, so much Thor, more silly. So Thor acted as a bridge to the Guardians of the Galaxy, that way when he, Rocket, and Groot head over <laughs> to the Battle of Wakanda, we're distracted by- Sorry, we got um, a kitty in the background. <laughs> we yeah. him do his thing. <laughs> but I was just saying, like, once Rocket, Thor, and Groot head to the Battle of Wakanda, and you have Groot saying, I am Groot, to Steve Rogers, and he says, I am Steve Rogers, mm -hmm. and, uh, it doesn't come across as silly, because it's like, okay, we had our time, and now we're ready to introduce a talking tree and a raccoon to a bunch of humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it just, I don't know, you just, you're just you just kind of with at this point. The Marvel movies, what I've always admired about the Marvel films is that they take Run. ideas that seem so ridiculous on paper Destiny's and seem like they wrong. only work in a comic book, and they somehow just make them work. And I think yeah. that part of the strength in the Marvel films is that they're not all the same tone. Some are serious, some are right in the middle, some are goofy. You know, they just kind of work with what it is they have and what superhero it is that they're working for and here you just like, they just found this great balance of making it silly in the right moments and then also bringing in certain personalities to come together and just be able to work off each other oh and, yeah absolutely and, and the reason like it, it definitely helps that all these movies have had a lighter tone and they're humorous which a lot of people give them crap but the reason you have those is because it makes everyone feel human. Mm -hmm. Even like a talking raccoon through CGI. Mm -hmm. You can identify with him. You really like him to the point when all the shit goes down, <laughs> it really hits home. Yeah, absolutely. And to that note, I think my favorite character interaction in this whole movie, you'll have to tell me yours, but my favorite was Star-Lord and Thor. Um, I think when they had a bit of a, um, yeah. a dick-wagging contest. For a brief minute there. <laughs> True. I don't know. I just thought it was funny because I mean I have a huge crush on um, Chris Pratt. Yes, thank you on Chris Pratt and just love Star Lord in general. So just seeing him trying to one up um, Thor, mm -hmm. I just thought that was so funny. And I just was like, yes, that's exactly how I expect these two to talk to each other. Now, do you have a certain like new double characters coming in and interacting with each other kind of moment, or do you have any that stuck out to you in particular, or any um, particular character in general who you just like seeing in this movie? I mean. Like, oh, I have I have an answer and then I have something that relates to kind of your question. Okay. My answer, now that I had a time to think about it, would be um, probably Tony Stark and Doctor Strange. Because when you watch the Doctor Strange movie, he's very much like Tony Stark in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, where he's cocky, he's a millionaire. But once these two actually meet, mm -hmm. they're different. Because huh? mm -hmm. Doctor Strange is more formal, he's more... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like Zen? Zen. <laughs> and Tony Stark is the he's, total opposite of that. He's in, 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 he's very cocky, a bit more mainstream. Yeah. yeah. And I think just seeing the cloak of levitation, um, when we have Tony Stark leaning on that cauldron and the cloak just slaps him. Yes, that was really funny. <laughs> um, but then, I mean, every time Drax uh, is on screen interacting with any of the characters that he has not interacted with before, it's just so humorous. Mm -hmm. it's Shame that he's gone. Shh. <laughs> no, he's not. It's, I, it's I, refuse, I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe oh, okay. it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> shush me about spoilers in a spoiler review. No, I'm not saying shush about, shush about spoiler review. I'm saying shush because I don't want to believe it. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do you want to just go over the list of who's gone? Because we we touched upon a lot of people. Do we just want to go over the full list? And, um, as I, heartbreaking as it sounds. I mean, we could try to name everyone off. Um, T'Challa's gone. Um, T'Challa. Peter um, Parker. Peter Quill. Mantis. Mantis. We already mentioned Drax. Uh, um, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch. Um, um, the Winter Soldier. Doctor Str Winter Soldier. Doctor Strange. Um, do we want to count Vision because he didn't technically wisp away like Lord Voldemort did? Huh? Well, Cause, yeah. Mm. I mean, no, I guess we could count him. As he's, well. he, he's yeah. Gone. Gamora's he's gone. gone. Gamora, uh, Teenage Groot. Mm -hmm. Falcon's gone. Drax. Did we already say Drax? 
You already said drag. Okay. So okay. I'm actually surprised that they didn't off any of the main players. Like, the, the well, five out of the original six Avengers are still around. Mm hmm so. Well, I mean, that honestly, that makes sense for marketability, in my opinion. But yeah. <laughs> but then that doesn't really explain why they got rid of T'Challa. I don't know. I, it's just it's just kind of random, though, isn't it? It's just, like, half the universe. So they literally just got rid of, like, half the characters. I guess that was the point, yeah. too. So... Yeah, that's yeah. sad. Yeah. So overall, does this movie work despite there being a lot of characters? Yeah, it does Absolutely. actually. This, uh, again, Marvel just keeps on impressing me with how they make things that don't seem like they're going to work actually do work. And is this movie perfect? Absolutely not. But it's a simple story and I think that that's a strength because we are with a bunch of people and they have one specific motive to stop Thanos and that's I think a, that's what really makes this movie work yeah so yeah May 3rd yeah just too far away I know but we, we got Ant-Man and the Wasp coming out which I'm Go I'm going to assume it takes place before all this because you can't really have something as lighthearted as that. Well, you never know because he wasn't even in this movie, which I was surprised about. For some reason, I thought he was going to be in this one too. But I know there's a bunch of characters around. But this but who's to say? Like if this if that movie takes place after Infinity War, mm -hmm. who's to say that he or the Wasp were part of that half? So I think just like just to, so people don't ask. Well, why weren't they considered the half? Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's they're probably gonna have this set sometime after Civil War. Yeah, probably. And Maybe. Then, yeah. yeah. No, you're probably right. Cause yeah, I don't. I, I have. You want to bet on it? No, I don't want to bet. Okay. On it, because I'm not. I. I. Because I'm. That's just why I'm not in the stock market. I'm not good at making predictions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just. You know, I would like it if it if it did take place later because I'd love to see more of what the what's going on in the world after these events. But you know, the Marvel films do have a tendency to not be um, chronological, so uh, that's true. We'll, we'll see. Because um, I mean, if you want to get into the chronological <laughs> discussion, um, Doctor Strange technically takes place before Civil War. Mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two takes place before. Age of Ultron and yeah. Ant-Man. And then there's also, of course, uh, Captain America the First Avenger, which was like, what, the, the, thir the, the third or yeah, the third or fourth film in the franchise, but it technically took place first. Yeah. Before anything. See, now I want to, honestly, I want to watch, I've never done this, but I would love to watch all the movies in chronological order. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, I've only, <laughs> I've only done that with uh, three of the movies, and then I just watched them in the order they release. I did it with... Um, Iron Man, Iron Man 2, and The Incredible Hulk, and then mm -hmm. everything else is just in the order they came out. Right. Well, kind of. Kind of. So there's a lot of movies. It, like, these aren't movies you can just sit in one sitting. Like, like yeah. Star Wars, even though it would take all day, you could watch all those in one sitting. And I have. Yes, I have too. But um, these these movies, not so much. It's going to take you days to watch them. Yeah. You can maybe watch all of them in over a weekend, but not in a day. So it's a lot to commit to if you're going to watch all the movies. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so anyway, I mean, overall, I love this movie. Any parting thoughts? I mean, I think we've gone enough into spoiler territory, but again, that's why everyone's here. Um, save everyone, Carol? Please? Can please save everyone, or at least like bring some sort of hope to bringing everyone back, because that'd be awesome. Please? <laughs> Alright everyone, thank you so much for joining us, and please be sure to follow this guy on his YouTube channel, Real Mr. Robinson, as well as on Stardust. Be sure to watch uh, both of our Stardust, by the way. We're also going to be doing a video with this guy, which I'll be sure to put yeah. a link in the description and in the end screen. We're going to be answering um, some questions on Stardust, as well as reacting to other people's reactions. So be sure to check that out. And I just want to say thank you for having me on. You are welcome. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you're here. And, and, here. <laughs> and everyone, um, just be sure also to leave a comment down below. Let us know what your favorite spoilers were, because you can do that in this video. Or, or least favorite. Yeah, or least favorite spoiler. Just let us know what you thought of the movie, if there's any plot holes that you noticed. Uh, right now, I can't think of anything, honestly, that comes to mind. I'm sure there are plenty of plot holes once you go back and watch it. But upon first viewing, I'm like, whatever, it's fine. Anyway, please be sure to write down a comment of your favorite spoiler or least favorite spoiler let us know what you guys thought of the movie you can talk about that stuff here totally fine and also be sure to give the movie a uh, like give this video a like and also um, just um, make sure you subscribe uh -huh. bye guys bye see ya <laughs>